Number one has us looking at the revenues of two companies modeled on the graph. And it asks us, it tells us that T is measured in years and that the revenue is measured in thousands of dollars. So then it says select all statements that correctly describe what the two graphs reveal about the revenues. So the first one says that the intersection of the graph tells us when the revenues of the two companies grow by the same factor. So this one's saying if we look at the intersection, we can see where they're growing by the same factor. That's false. The intersection actually tells us when they have the same revenue. So that's when their outputs are the same, not when they're growing by the same factor. So B would be good. At the intersection, F of T is greater than G of T. So the revenue um, of F is greater than the revenue of G. And that's not true. They'd be the same at the intersection. At the intersection, F of T equals 215.7 and so does g of t so if we look here and you kind of look um, at where this would hit vertically okay it's just over 200 so that would make sense and they're both the same and then part e we need to know both expressions that define f and g to find the value of t at the intersection so if at the intersection they're the same Okay, it's after a certain number of years, how many years, and then that it'll be the same revenue. So both of those, or that ordered pair is going to be the same on both graphs. So we do not need to know both expressions. We would only need to know one. And F, if we know at least one of the expressions that define them, then we could calculate it. And that's true. Number two, the population of a fast-growing city in Texas can be modeled by this equation. The population of the fast-growing city in Tennessee can be modeled by Q of T. In both equations, T represents the years since 2016, and the population is measured in thousands. The graph represents the two functions shown, and the point where the two graphs intersect is about 271.7. So the output value here is 271.7. So I'm just going to write that on there. So what does this intersection mean? So this is um, the time. I'm just going to type this out. So the time in years since 2016 when the populations were the same. So then find the x-coordinate um, of the intersection by solving each equation. And um, so they give us the output here, and then we want to solve each of these equations. So the um, P of T equation, so let me get that written down. So the P of T equation is 82 times e to the 0 0.078 t and then the q equation so that's what we're using for this one and then the q equation is 132 whoops so 132 times e to the 0 0.47 t all right, so if we're going to solve each of these, we would plug this value in for the output. So we've got, um, instead of P of T here, we've got 271.7. So to solve this, um, we can try and isolate this T. So we're going to divide both sides by 82. And if you divide that by 82, so 271.7, divided by 82 you get 3.134 um, and then that's equal to just e to the 0 0.078 t to undo um, an exponential base of an e so to undo this we would do the natural log of both sides remembering that a natural logs base is e so type in um, ln of 3.13 
one four or sorry three point three one three four into your calculator and this would be i'm just going to write it up here one point one nine seven nine and then the natural log and the e here cancel so the natural log and the e cancel and you just get back that exponent of 0 0.078 times t to undo um, the 0 0.078 times t we would just divide by 0 0.078 and um, so divide this in your calculator and you get about 15.36 equals T. So after a little over um, 15 years, you'll be at a population of 271,000. All right, so then for Q of T, we would do the same thing. So then we're gonna have this 271 equals this. Okay, so now it's equal to the 132.5 or sorry, times e to the 0, um, 0. 0.047. I missed a zero in there. Okay, and then, um, so we divide by 132 to isolate the e. So 271.7 um, divided by 132 gives us 2.0583 equals e to the 0. 0.047. To undo a base of E, we would do the natural log to both sides. So if we type in the natural log of 2.0583 into our calculator, we get 0 0.7218. The natural log and the base E will cancel, so we'll just get back that exponent of 0.047t. And then we'll divide by 0 0.047 to both sides. And you end up with 15.36 equals T. So we can see that we got the same answer in both equations for that population. So explain why we can find out the T value of the intersection of the two graphs by solving P of T equals Q of T. Well, because when their outputs are the same, then their inputs are the same too. That's where these cross. So the intersection, um, and let me type this out. So at the intersection, the um, functions will have the same input and output. So you can solve for where they're, when their outputs are the same, what's the input that's gonna get you there. All right, then um, number three, the function f is given by this. Select all equations whose graph um, meets the graph for f at a positive value of x. So when we're talking about this, this is going to be like looking at the two graphs. So we've got this one. And let me just draw this one in here. So we'll just estimate this. So it starts at about 100. And then it's got a growth factor of three. So it's going to be something like this. We don't care what it does back here. But now we want to look at these ones and see which ones will meet this in this first quadrant. So for, and let me actually move this one. Whoops. Let me move this 100 up a little bit. So let's say that 100 is maybe like here. Um, so for this part A, it starts below, right? So A is starting below this function. And so it's going to have to be growing faster than this function. Its growth rate is going to have to be higher in order for it to touch it. If the growth rate stays um, below it, then it'll never touch. So this was below. So this has to be larger than the growth rate of the function, which is 3. And E is only 2.71. And that's less than 3. So if it starts below and it grows slower, it's never going to cross it. It's just going to stay something like this for all of time and it'll never grow past it. Um, then the next one starts at 500. So this one's starting um, above our function since our black function, our original function started at, at 100. So this one's starting above. So now in order to cross it, it's going to have to grow slower so that this one can catch up. So this is above, so this needs to be less. 
and E is 2.71, that's less than three. So this one's gonna grow less quickly than this one. So they're gonna cross. So this is going to cross. Um, I can't really show it to you on there, but if you do this, you can imagine that they would cross. Um, so then this next one is at 500, okay, starts at 500. Now, it, this one has a negative exponent, okay? So it has a, a negative value that's going in there. So we know that that's decaying. So this negative exponent means that this is decaying or going down. So this one's starting up here and it's going down. So that's definitely going to cross that one. D um, is going to be a hundred. Let me, or sorry, a thousand. It's going to start at a thousand. So let's move this down. And so this one's going to start at 1000. So it's going to start above it again, right? So this is above. So then this needs to be lower or less than our growth rate. And two is less than three. So this one's going to grow at a less steep rate. So this one, our original is going to be able to catch it at some point. So this one will. So the last one, we've got 600. So 600 again is above our original 100. So it's higher than it. So then this needs to be less. It needs to be growing less quickly since it's already above it. And 10 is much higher than a growth rate of three. So this one's never gonna catch it. This one's gonna go up way faster than the original one did. Number four, the half-life of nickel 63 is 100 years. Um, a student says an artifact with nickel 63 in it will lose a quarter or 25% of that substance in 50 years. And 50 years is half of a half-life. Okay, so half of one half-life. Since 50 is half of 100. So do you agree with this statement? So we're kind of looking at, we want to be looking at the growth factor, right? And see if after 50 years, how much of the substance was lost. So remember that the growth factor here is a half-life is some value of T divided by 100 since our half-life is 100 years. So in this case, we have, um, we're looking at after 50 years. So we want to see what's this growth factor going to be. And, you know, you'd have some initial value here, but it doesn't matter. You want to look at what's the growth factor. So then if we put in one half to the one half power, essentially, since 50 divided by 100 is a half. So if you type this into your calculator, so one half to the one half power, this will give you, um, a growth factor of 0 0.707 over that 50 years. So over 50 years, that'll be your growth factor. So this is about 71% of the original left. So if we had a, if we start with 100% and we minus 71%, okay, that's about 29% um, decrease. So no, we don't, I don't agree because this said a quarter, which is 25%. And this is um, losing about 30%. Number five, estimate the value of each expression and then record it. Use a calculator to find its actual value. So this is log base 10 of 123. So an estimate here, um, if we think about 10 squared, that's 100. And if we think about 10 cubed, that's 1,000. So this is going to be somewhere between there, since 123 is between there, closer to 2. So my estimate my estimate is going to be something like 2.1. For this next one, we've got log base 10 of 110,000. And so that's got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 zeros, kind of. So if we did 10 to the 5th, that would be 100,000. And 10 to the 6th would be 1 million. So 110,000 is much closer to 100,000. So this is going to kick back much closer to five. So maybe again, 5.1 or 5.0 something. And then this last one, 1.1. Um, so log base 10 of 1.1. Well, 10 to the zero gives us one. 
10 to the first gives us 10. 1 1.1 1 is between here. Again, 1.1 1 .1 is closer to 1, so this is going to be closer to 0. Um, so maybe something like um, 0.8. Oh, sorry, that's closer to 1. Maybe something like 0.2. Okay, so something closer to 0, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, something like that. All right, then you would type these into your calculator. So the log of 123 is actually equal to 2.0899. The log of 110,000 is approximately equal to 5.0414. And then the log of 1.1 is equal to 0 0.0414. Number six, here are the graphs of two functions, f of x and g of x. Which graph corresponds to each function and how do you know? So a couple of things when we look at this, they have the same initial value. So they're, start, they're both starting here. So then we see that graph two is above graph one. So this means that this one is growing faster. So graph two is growing faster, meaning it's going to have a higher growth factor. So if we look at the growth factor in each case, so this growth factor, okay, so f of x has a growth factor of 1.2. So then we want to look at um, the growth factor of g of x and see if that's higher than 1.2 or lower than 1.2. So here's the growth factor of g of x, e to the 0.2, okay, because remember we can do e to the 0.2 to the x. And so this is um, calculating this out in your calculator um, would give us that this decimal right here is actually 1.148 to the X. So this growth factor is less than this one. So 1.14 is less than 1.2. So um, this top function here, so graph two is F of X and graph one is g of x. Number seven, explain how the graph represents um, e to the x. And then explain, or here's the graph of e to the x. And then we need to explain how we can use the graph to estimate these different things, okay? So this is e to the x. So a solution the solution to the equation 300 equals e to the x. Well, 300 is the output, so we would look at 300's output here and run over until it crosses the graph and then look down at an x value estimate. So this estimate can maybe be something like 5.5. And then how would we estimate the value of ln of 700? Well, that also we're looking for the exponent on e that gives us 700. So this one is really asking us what exponent of e equals to 700. So it's this same idea here that we're going to go to this output of 700 and then look down to the x value and estimate something between 6 and 7. Looks like it's a little bit closer to 7. So maybe 6.6 .6 for this one. <clears throat> 